Welcome to the second episode of the Cider House Rebellion Folk Show, where you get the insider scoop from our special guests. Mm. And as you can see, we're still out here in space. Social distancing is that much easier. Yes, although as you can see, the weather today is a bit inclement, really. That's not true. Weather in space is always the same. It's just... You just don't notice. I suppose, you need to look yeah, out the window. More. I suppose there was... Well, we're outside. We're outside the spacecraft. That's how we're lit by the things. The, oh. the headlights from the spacecraft. Dear me. Anyway, I suppose, yeah, there was the space dust yes. in the meteorite. I think that might explain me, actually, the space dust. Yeah, it might do. Anyway, maybe we should play some music. Yes.
So those of you who saw last week's episode will have seen our shameless plug uh, for CDs and the like, but I realised that we forgot something. And that is the Cider House Rebellion tune book that Adam promised he would finish. I haven't started the Cider House Rebellion tune book, and you know that. <laughs> yeah, but I thought I might oh, thanks. touch a pressure on here. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> I was thinking that this is episode two. And it there is. are six episodes yes. of this series. I thought, you know, how about finishing it for the last episode? That's very easy to say, yes. Yes, that's no problem. Marvelous. Of course, one doesn't have to take any notice of such oh, things. Oh, no, no, you've just promised the world. Well, I wouldn't, From be, space. I wouldn't be the first person to have <laughs> promised a variety of things that didn't happen. Um, uh, oh, but this promise. one is going to happen. Oh, so, indeed. for mm. the last episode, um, we will uh, we will give you all the information about the uh, the new book. Obviously, there'll be a link and stuff, and it'll be ready for Christmas, won't it, Adam? Oh, yes. It'll be fine. <laughs> Marvellous. You heard it here. Hmm. So did I. <laughs> Unexpectedly. <laughs> I think it's time to move on to our second special guest, Mr. Paul Sartin, from Bellowhead and Faustus. Belsadar's Feast. And other things, probably. Absolutely. Especially. Well, yes, we'll yes. find out, we won't will. we? Yes, we will. So, Mr. Paul Sartin. So, Paul, thank you very much for joining us. Um, lovely to have you along for a chat. Thanks for asking me. Hi. Hello, yeah, hello there. Hello. So, here we are. Separated by a surprising number of miles, hoping the internet's going to keep keep going for us, and that's been a bit of a feature of the of the last little while. How's your lockdown been, Paul? Dare I say it, and it might sound a bit callous, but <laughs> I've enjoyed most of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Good, not yeah. least because I've saved thousands of pounds on fuel. I wonder if anyone's done any form of um, scientific analysis on the uh, the impact on global warming of locking everybody up. I was surprised to, um, <laughs> I've done an unscientific look at my bank account this year <laughs> and I've discovered that it's actually, uh, you come out with more in the bank account by not going and doing gigs and earning money than just by <laughs> staying at home. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lesson there, isn't there? I'm not certain how popular that would be if we put that forward as a, uh, a strategy for musicians worldwide, but... Well, let's just uh, keep it amongst ourselves, because it's working absolutely. for me. <laughs> yeah. so, so what, what have you been up to, Paul? Uh, well, I've, I've generally been more busy than usual. Um, I'm, I'm also in the, the middle of moving house, which sort of... Oh, crumbs. As I'm sure you can imagine, is quite, uh, quite chaotic. But uh, yes. I've just been doing loads and loads and loads of work online and learning new tech and doing all sorts of new yeah. projects that I wouldn't have, have had the time or the headspace to do in the past with travelling around the country and sleeping in travel lodges and yes. that sort yeah. of thing. It, it's been a chance also to, I don't know, um, re-evaluate you know, what I'm doing in the okay. future. So, so yeah, it's been pretty good for me. Yeah, we've, we've done a lot of stuff as well. It's exactly what you said, there's just been space to sit and think wow i want to do this and then dive into doing it and we've released yeah. two discs which we had no wow. plans to do um during the time I, I agree completely in that it's it's allowed us to do things we never would have done um the intangible of course is what would we have done that we haven't been able to do but hey we're not going to dwell on that one too much um so you say you've been re-evaluating that's that intrigues me well i think you know i've been touring for years, 30 mm. years really, and uh, not 35 years, dare I say it. Yes. <laughs> and um, it's quite wearing, and I'm not getting yeah. any younger. And I was already thinking about maybe being less uh, reliant mm. on my touring mm -hmm. income anyway. And this has forced my hand. Yeah. Um, it's also uh, using tech has been something that we've discussed quite a lot in the folk world, in particular in. Uh, in my trio of which I'm a member, Faustus, and we've been talking yeah. about putting stuff online for ages because the classical world have been doing it. Operas, you can go and see an opera at the cinema now. Uh, yeah. And the pop world's been mm -hmm. doing it. And actually, it, you know, we're now playing catch-up, but I'm not sure we would have played catch-up so quickly if this mm. hadn't all happened. So uh, so it's so, sort of a way forward, and not that we've got much choice anyway, but it's been useful <laughs> no. to learn how to present things online and, and get that online audience, particularly younger people, who might not necessarily mm. go to a folk club, but maybe would watch something on YouTube. Yeah, it's that's 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 really true. I mean, um, so my daughter and her boyfriend 
turns out love a lot of folk music, not everything, of course, but there's some stuff that they really enjoy. They wouldn't be going to a folk club to see it ever. Folk festival, no, my, maybe. Um, but I don't think my kids would be, be see dead in a folk club, but they all love the music. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But it's, it's interesting that my daughter's got stuff that just turns up on her iPhone. She starts in one place and goes along. Then you'll find on her playlist some really, really quite iconic folk stuff that she would not necessarily have even really thought of as being folk. It's just something she really likes. And that's a, that's a thing we can all... It's a great thing. And it's meeting the audience on their own terms. And perhaps, you know, in the future, when venues open up again, it will be a bit of audience development, bringing in some of the younger people. One yeah, would could hope. be, couldn't it? One would hope. One would hope. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting that bringing in um, the, what you just said about audience on their own terms, that's something um, Steve Knightley was saying as well. You know, you're going into somebody's room. You're joining them in their sitting room to do a gig and it changes the whole the whole thing. It's a very strange dynamic. It took, I've got to admit, and you probably know this too, but it took quite a lot of time to get used to that idea of having that intimacy but not. So that when you finish a piece online you don't sort of get the audience response that you would do if you were actually in a no, room with them. No, absolutely. It's, it's very odd. You just have to sort of bite the bullet and get on with it. And, <laughs> you know, we've all found ways around it now and just unmute everybody at the end of every piece so you can hear them clapping and then your ego <laughs> is boosted again. <laughs> but that relies on being somewhere where the live stream is, is actually good enough that you can put it out on live stream and for that to work, which for some of us, <laughs> living yeah. in the depths of God knows where, that's not hugely yeah. easy. I, we've had a couple of, well, we've had one particular disaster where we prepared a, an online concert with Faustus using quite complicated te uh, tech. But this is quite early on in the lockdown. We tested yeah. everything. It was working fine. We went online on a Friday night. And, of course, Friday night, the world and yeah. his wife is online. Everyone's and on. And the whole yes. thing just completely crashed. We got four oh. marks for effort, though. But, uh, yeah. I'm, but since I'm, then, we've found, other ways, <laughs> we've found other ways so around this. You know, Are you doing that as yeah. the three of you together in one location or are you actually trying to remotely connect each other we initially uh did a concert where we were uh in our separate dwellings and we, we mm. were going to present some solo material from each of us okay. yeah. you can't play yeah. at the same time but uh yeah. we've end ended up pre-recording a videos okay. of us playing all of the music from our three albums uh -huh. yeah um in in order of the albums and presenting them uh okay. weekly over three weeks, right. uh, but presenting them live, but showing the pre-recorded material so we could get a decent yeah. sound and decent lighting. Absolutely. And also just showing people sort of um, the background to the songs, the background to the making of the albums, photographs, manuscripts, having a chat with people. And that's been really good fun, actually. As it's, been, it's been very, very interactive, too. Similar to what we did, because we had a, a similarly... <laughs> totally unsuccessful first outing oh, as exactly yes. as you said all the all the tech was checked we'd gone through everything definitely all going to work yeah no problem whatsoever hit go about five minutes in it just all fell apart completely because yeah. suddenly it was the evening and everybody was on the internet exactly as you well, said not only That's that it. sod's law hit full blast because it had been perfect and okay so the internet was struggling slightly but of course that evening my modem decided to die and I was the one hosting. I mean, it's just, why? Why that evening? And so, just, oh, the joys I of just, it. I just, I had know. to bite the bullet. And very early on, I think it was, I met up with uh, Jackie Oates and John Spires in my garden. And mm. I was struggling with some of the tech. And they said, just, just invest. Get the best stuff now. No, stop messing around because you just give yourself yeah. a stomach ulcer. So I've, <laughs> I've just bought, bought a few little bits and pieces to, yeah. to give me some uh, peace of mind, really. Yeah, yeah, which is all great as if you can do the pre-recorded angle for at least some of it. Otherwise, you'll just rely on that very last thing. If somebody dams the river, the water yeah. doesn't flow. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> as it were. Yeah. So, so you've touched on the fact that, as we all know, when you when you play to camera, um, whether you uh, are talking and looking at live comments and the like, it, it certainly isn't the same as walking on a stage. So. How have you found it's affected your performance style? I mean, it, normally I imagine if you're on stage and you hear you hear a reaction from the audience to a certain uh, comment or song or verse or, or whatever it might be, you as a musician, you react. But when we're playing so uh, so isolated, how, how have you altered your performance style to, to work with that? 
To be honest, I've found it easier than doing live gigs. <laughs> I mean, apart from my very first solo one, it was my first ever solo gig, and it was online, and that's been another sort of new departure. I am, yeah. um, you know, I was pretty anxious about that. Hmm. But once I've done one, I've actually rather enjoyed it. Um, yeah. I think it's because it's easier to sort of blank off the audience. Uh, that's in the same true, way yeah. that if when, when I've been on a really big stage, like in the old Bel Air days, when you've got yeah. hundreds of thousands of people, you can sort of just shut it all off. But then if you're playing in a small room, and I'll give you an example, last week I pre recorded um, some solo stuff for the Wren Trust down in Devon, okay. who okay. specialise in sort of West Country music. Mm hmm. And in the the uh, sort of virtual audience, and basically the people running in the gig were Jim Causley, yep, and uh, John Dyer, Paul Wilson, <laughs> yeah, and uh, Rosa Rebecca, and all very good musicians. And I was petrified because they were right <laughs> up against me. And I'd much rather play to a hundred people online than four people in a small room. <laughs> yes, I know exactly <laughs> what you mean. Yeah, it, it is that, that whole conversation of nerves is a curious one. Uh, 10,000 yeah. people is a lot less nerve-wracking than three. It's absolutely yeah. true. Yeah, I've got to say, they were all lovely about it. And um, Marilyn Tucker was emceeing and she was great. And yeah, they were all very kindly. But when you're playing, particularly uh, um, in front of your peers as well, I think that, that mm. made it mm. more exposing. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, that brings us actually to one of the questions we've asked um, so far. What is it that you find hardest about performing? Mm, I still do get a bit of stage fright, depending on what mm -hmm. I'm doing. I think particularly um, when I'm singing and leading singing. It's not oh. so bad in Belshazzar's Feast because we just prat around all the time. <laughs> so we, can <laughs> <sort> of, <laughs> we can get away with a bit, but... I think, particularly if I've got something quite exposed in Faustus, and there are a couple of slow yeah. songs that I do, I do get anxious of that. But actually, I think what I find more difficult about the whole performing lifestyle is just all the travelling and sleeping in yeah. a different bed every yeah. night, and that general sort of wear and tear, which, uh, I don't know, yeah. it just... Uh, at the end of a tour, I just want to collapse for a couple of weeks. Yeah, but, absolutely. Yeah. No, so I, I think that actually, I've, this has been a chance to actually... Um, resuscitate myself over the last few months <laughs> and I've talked to quite a lot of other musicians about it and they've all said they're enjoying music a lot more now because oh, we're all getting to a rut of touring the same material you know again and again mm. and having to find new stuff and whatever else and, and we had a break from it and then when I first got together with uh, Paul Hutchinson and Bell Shazas and, and also mm. with Faustus to do yeah. some recording together uh, it, I, I realised what I'd taken for granted actually and I even right, I went yeah, to an outdoor, yeah. outdoor session at the Fleece Inn in Brentford, where we were recording. There was a you know a come all ye session in the garden, and normally I sort of steer clear of those. You know, mm. cold and a bit damp, and oh yet another session. <laughs> yeah. And I realised that actually what great fun it is. It's been a chance to just. It's been like a sabbatical, really, chance to refresh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I was talking to a, a guy who's an MD for a lot of big pop names, and uh, he he I was having a. A meal with him um, after just doing something. We're sitting outside in Manchester, socially distanced, good God. Um, and uh, he's saying, well, I can't believe it. You know, it's only a year since there was some tour that he'd been asked to do that was going to relatively interesting places, but it wasn't as well paid. It wasn't going to be five-star hotels this time. So he decided not to do it. And he said to me, do you know, now I'd pay to do it. And I said, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. but the thing is, if you're yeah. a self-employed musician, you never get a chance to take a sabbatical. You know, you because no, you can't turn, turn work down. Oh, so. No, I, mean, I can't. I don't think I've ever heard of a, uh, well, certainly a self-employed musician. Maybe an orchestral, somebody on an orchestral contract, perhaps, maybe, sort of. But I don't know musicians able to take that. Oh, I'm just going to take twelve oh, months off. Oh, and Sophie Mutter did. Um, I remember. Well, okay, she might be getting <laughs> right a top slightly of the tree, bigger fee there. And, yeah, slightly you know, bigger. <laughs> if you're on fifty thousand a gig, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think the only, the only apart from uh, lockdown, the only, only other way I'd be able to take a sabbatical would be to get pregnant. So that's not going to happen, is it? <laughs> too old. <laughs> yeah, too old. Absolutely. Yeah, I yeah. suppose I did have an enforced, um, probably be I think it was eight to twelve weeks about. Oh, seven years ago, when I managed to, um, well, you know the ditch along the road near Towersy Folk Festival? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it looked in the dark like the pavement, and it had nothing to do with the bar, absolutely not at all, no matter what anyone else might say, and so I decided to walk on the pavement, which, of course, was six feet below me, with nothing in between ah. me and it. So, yeah, so 12 weeks of... Um, 
12 weeks on crutches. That did kind of stop yeah, the not playing. probably the best way of do it, taking time <laughs> No, off, I'm, it? I'm thinking it's not ideal. Well, actually, I had a sabbatical, didn't I, if I think about it? Because um, in this very place where I am now, which is my mother's place up on the North York Moors, I was, um, I was cutting firewood for her, which was very nice filial good behaviour. And um, unfortunately, mysteriously, the axe ended up going through the back of my thumb and cutting both tendons. Ooh. And that made bowing on the fiddle a lot harder <laughs> than it would have been. I was going to say, has that affected your technique long term? Well, only in the sense that I had to change it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I think is the answer there. <laughs> now, the big question, though, is did it improve it? I think it probably did in the end. Because <laughs> if, I think, well... Well, because I think you should let us, we should be the judges of that, actually. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, it's true. I'm not going to get my fiddle out now, so I'm going to stick with my own opinion. <laughs> but it's actually a little, a little bit what you said, Paul, about having a chance to reset and review. OK, so I've been playing the fiddle by then professionally for God knows how long, touring the world, doing everything. Um, mm. And it's all just in a particular groove. And to discover you can't do it like that anymore and you have to rethink also means you rethink what you're trying to achieve. So actually, yeah. I think more subtlety in a bit more skill might have come out of it in the end. Oh. So I recommend to anybody who's not sure about the way they're playing, take an axe to yourself. Mm, I would like to <laughs> do a disclaimer at this point in time. Um, also, Adam, you say it brought subtlety and skill. Um, when are you, I going, said more when are you subtlety, going to reveal I this? That's more I more subtlety, I said, I think. Oh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job you two are friends, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, talking of friends, actually, I was talking to... Um, well, a friend of yours who you've mentioned already, um, in order, before to prepare for this interview, um, I was teaching with Mr Paul Hutchinson down at uh, Halsey Manor. And I am just... sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and we were chatting away. I said, oh, I'm going to be talking to uh, Paul coming up soon. Uh, what do you think I should ask him? And uh, so he told me all about your love of bagpipes. So um, I'm wondering if you could expand upon your love of bagpipes and accordions, he said, as well. Uh, um, well, um, you can tell him from me that I prefer the bagpipes to the accordions. <laughs> <laughs> I am trying to get Murray to retrain, it has to be said. Yeah, well, well as a ballet dancer. As an assignment, as a, <laughs> I have sort of almost, when I say perfected, that's probably the, the wrong term, but I've, uh, I've acquired the technique on the oboe of making the oboe sound a bit, little bit like a small set of bagpipes, at which point I'm able to drown out Paul's accordion. <laughs> so that's something yeah. I've ticked off my, you know, that's a life achievement. Yeah. Oh, well. That's... I can identify with that as no. an aim, actually, because I have to say, drowning out Murray would be great. I can't quite do it on my fiddle. <laughs> Never mind. Just to make you feel even more worried about me, Paul, um, when I was, I think, about seven, I'd been playing the piano for a bit, and my dad said, do you want to learn another instrument? And gave me the list of all the instruments he could think of, so all the orchestral instruments and all the rock instruments and all, everything he could think of. Uh, and I narrowed it down to two. And, yes, you can guess it was either the accordion or the bagpipes. So I think I'm probably beyond the pale for you, really. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, this is a worry, isn't it? Is this, inter is this interview nearly over? Oh, yeah, I was going to take my mind off that quickly. Feeling a bit queasy. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of the things that interests me is um, the whole concept of, you know, the folk tradition, folk music, what is it, and all that. Um, and I think it's quite interesting to ask you how you fit you, how you feel you fit with that. I mean, Faustus is, in some ways, it seems very clear to be what it is, but it also brings something quite new, I think, maybe. Um, so yeah, I, well, I would hope so. I think that, um, I, you know, I'm flattered that you think so because I, we listen to all sorts of music. The last time we got together for a rehearsal, the three of us, we ended up listening to uh, Pakistani Kavali music oh. and Miles Davis and Thelonious Monk and Errol Garner. Um, we listen to all sorts of things, but I'm, certainly I'm, I'm sure we've been influenced by uh, the more rock end of things, particularly the sort of 70s, <laughs> more prog rock type stuff. But just whatever we've been listening to, really. Yeah. Uh, and we tend to be quite free with the editing pen as well with, with the stuff that we find. And if we don't like the tune, we just write a new one and so on. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think that you know, maybe the generation before us, they were quite rightly more concerned with sort of preserving the tradition as it was yeah. because it was in danger of dying out. But because they've done that work, that groundwork for us, with the likes of 
uh, you know, Bellahead and Faustus and all the other mm -hmm. groups that are doing the same sort of thing. We, no, we, th that music's now preserved. It's in archives. It's in manuscript. It's all online in the Vaughan Williams Library. Yeah. So we can, I, I suppose our, our mission is to try and make that music listenable to contemporary audiences. And I, I've uh, got various neighbours and friends here in Whitchurch in Hampshire who've come to our Faustus and other gigs. Um, and they're not folkies. But afterwards they said, that's not folk music. <laughs> it's just music. If you advertise it as folk, as folk, it will put us off. Find another name yeah, for it. Yeah, no, we, that's <laughs> this. This word folk. It's just such a. I mean, it's right Loaded and it's term. wrong all in the same go. <laughs> yeah. It's so yeah. difficult. And yet, Paul, the thing that really is interesting is listen. If I actually something Steve Steve rightly said um, in his interview was, what is an English sound? But actually, to me, Faustus is is a thing. If I was imagining an English folk sound in a way that is it's got all that about it and yet it's still something that younger people are going to be listening to now and say oh that's not folk music it's just music strange i, I hope so but i mean the influences in, in terms of the arrangements and so on come from all over there's a it's quite riff based which you know doesn't yeah. definitely come from the blues and rock world but we do sing in our own english accents and not in transatlantic accents <laughs> and yeah. you know and it's very important that on the whole we do english stuff we do, it's not exclusive we um i just realized that one of the tracks we recorded in 2011 or 2012 banks of the nile and there are versions mm. from all over the country but i hadn't realized that the version we did was drawn from a uh a canadian one and there's a song oh. on the last full album that was collected in the Appalachians. Uh, oh. So, yeah, I, I think that's... A, I've never heard anyone say that, but I really like that idea. It's sort of imagining what an English sound, contemporary English sound might yeah. be. That's really good. Can I quote you on that, actually? Yeah, you can. <laughs> Thanks, I'll buy you a pint one day. That would be great <laughs> if we ever have that opportunity again. <laughs> when such things are allowed, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There is going to be one heck of a... Um, Mute folk musician booze oh. up at some point, isn't there? Ricky, you bet. <laughs> so you've therefore we we've hit the lockdown thing, and you've evolved. You've now doing a solo mm. stuff and all that. So you said you're busier than ever. So what are you yeah. doing? What what is what is the life now? What are you doing? Well, I, I'm doing the occasional solo gig, and as I said, that's a new thing, uh, both online, and I did one actually to a limited audience, which also oh, went really? out online as well in the summer, uh, with my kids, and that's a new d departure. We talked about it a, a year ago and never got mm -hmm. round to it, but Sartin and Sons is now a, a new nice. ensemble. <laughs> Brilliant. We've done uh, one gig, full gig. I've done one with just one of my sons, and then we're doing a full one on the 21st of November via Live to Your Living Room. So oh, um, that's really, you know, what could be better than sitting and making music with the kids and getting paid for it? This is a song collected from Great Aunt Edith, as you can probably tell by its joyous lyrics. It's called Brisk Lad. <coughs> I am a brisk lad, but my fortune is bad. And I am most wonderful. keep fat oxen and sheep and a neat little nag on the downs in the middle of the night when the moon shines bright there's a number of work to be done my brave boy there's a number of work to be done So I'll ride all around in another man's land And I'll claim a fat sheep for my own I'll end off his life with the aid of my knife and then I will carry him home. 
roam, my brave boys. And then I will carry him home. My children, they will pull the skin from their youth. And I'll be in a place where there's none. When the constable comes, I'll stand with my gun. And I'll swear all I have is my own, my brave boys. And I'll swear all I have is my own, for I am a brisk lad. But my fortune is bad And I am most wonderful poor Or indeed I intend My life for to mend And to build a house down on the So um, that's that's my favourite thing that's come out. But yeah. I've been doing, uh, at the beginning of lockdown, I did a lot of work for Laurel Swift um, with her Travelling yeah, yeah. with Thomas project. And that involved, mm -hmm. <laughs> bearing in mind that we'd only just downloaded Zoom, um, yeah. instrumentalists and singers, but we were working together with dancers online. Wow. <clears throat> and that was trial by fire, I've got to submit. It was, oh, it was great. I've, um, <clears throat> I've been teaching, I've been doing mentoring for Southwest Music School. I've been doing a lot of... Uh, I, done some sort of collaborative stuff with Orchestra of the Swan, Madrigals. Wow. Um, um, what else? Oh, yeah. I, I've got a friend who works in an old people's home near, nearby. Mm -hmm. And I, I did a load of songs for VE Day, and I think that's one of the videos you might be showing later. Oh, okay, um, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, that would make sense. Not, not necessarily the, most, the more triumphalist, <clears throat> excuse me, triumphalist songs, but things like Lily Marlene, which um, hopefully everyone will watch. Yes soon <laughs> and uh, I put these onto USB sticks and onto a YouTube channel and my friend took them into the old people's home and bearing at this point not only were the old people's homes locked down but the yeah. the residents were locked inside their own rooms oh, as well yeah, absolutely yeah and they couldn't yeah. see their relatives and so no. uh, my, my friend Wendy took took these videos around and got everyone joining in and she said there was you know um Keep the home fires burning, or we will meet again, or something. There was a, oh. a ninety-three-year-old Spitfire pilot singing along to it. Oh, oh wow, that's, that's yeah, pretty and, amazing, and actually, isn't it? So, th what sprang out of that was um, a thing I'm still working on. It's a sort of ongoing project called Songs for Seniors. So, okay. Wendy did a survey in her old people's home of what elderly people now want to listen to because they're not really the wartime generation. And it no, sings no. like uh, no. Singing in the Rain, my favourite thing, stuff on the musicals, yeah, 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 bit of yeah. Nat King Cole, You Are My Sunshine. Yeah. So I've, I've been putting together a load of those, and um, it's great music, a lot of this stuff. Really, really good, and really difficult piano parts as well. Mm. So I've been playing the piano and either singing or getting friends to sing, and, and that's, you know, it's not really for the money. We've been given a bit of a grant, but actually it's just something you can do for other people at what is quite a, a miserable time. Yeah, yeah no, that sounds a really nice thing to be doing. Yeah. I think that's a real credit to you. Yeah, no. I mean, well, my, my, I'm loving my, it. My, yeah, my wife works in uh, dementia care, so she's directly right. involved with a lot, a lot of that side of things. And music is a, such an unbelievable key to opening up some of these challenges. I, I, I know oh, yes. she's told yeah. me some of the stories. I mean, they, they're wonderful, they're powerful, they, they bring tears to your eyes, etc. cetera. It, it is. Oh, absolutely. To bringing music I into their... I used to do a lot of elderly care settings, particularly for people with dementia and Alzheimer's, with Benji Kirkpatrick mm. up in South Yorkshire for this organisation called Lost Chord. And okay. I, I'll never forget playing in one home where there was an elderly gentleman, sort of pretty much bent double, no communication for him whatsoever. Uh, he was holding the carer's hand, or she was holding his hand. There was no communication. Apart from someone near the end, I started, well, we started singing something that everyone will know, probably 
I don't know, it may well have been we'll meet again or something like that, mm-hmm. something very yeah. familiar. Yeah. And I saw him blowing on the nurse's hand. And I thought, well, you know, whatever. And then <laughs> afterwards, the, the carer, she came up and she was in absolute floods of tears. And she said that he'd been in the home for four months, mm. no communication, and when that song started, he was blowing the rhythm out on her hand. Oh, that's wow. the only <laughs> communication they'd ever had from him. Gosh. Yeah. And that's one of my favourite musical moments ever, you know. Yeah. yeah. My wife used to do live music now. Years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. I used to and do it as well, that, yeah. She used to come home with very similar stories, saying, wow, I couldn't yeah. believe it. It was just so amazing that this yeah. person uh, suddenly was connected really to... Yeah, it, it is so team. important, yeah, absolutely. And as and we that, know at the moment, it's like the vulnerable people who are going to be suffering the most, so... Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've got to look after them somehow. We have. We have. And Going back to a positive, though, what you were saying... I mean, that is all fantastically positive, but I was just starting to feel a bit sad there, so... <laughs> Um, you were saying about <laughs> doing stuff with your sons. Curiously, yeah. that's exactly what um, Murray and I have ended up doing a project with my daughter. Um, oh, lovely. Over lockdown. It, suddenly she unlocked this desire to be, well, she's always written poetry, but for, that maybe we could do poetry with her. What we play, she does it. And it's been great. It's, but it's, that's just, without this being put together as a family with nothing to do over this period, nothing mm. that we would normally do, you wouldn't have had the chance for that seed to grow. So it's, it's nice yes, to have had the It's same really positive, thing. isn't it? It is, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, we could be, it would be very easy to moan about all of this, but actually those of us who are fortunate enough to not be ill, which is the worst thing, there, <laughs> yes. there, are, there are ways through this. So, you know, um, necessity is the mother of invention, really. If I release a CD with my children, um, I'm <laughs> not convinced it will work. It's too early, that well, that's what I think. As they're three and... How old are they? Eight, three years and eight months, so the two of them. Well, so, start them young, you know. Yeah, well, my youngest, Myla, last night did decide, at, I think it was at one in the morning till five, that we should have a rehearsal. Um, which... <laughs> that, well, he's already keeping musicians hours, isn't he? <laughs> Absolutely, yes, yeah, that's is. it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the weird thing, though, um, actually, in a way, about not doing the touring? You can almost start having a sleep pattern like a normal person. It's very <laughs> confusing. Except it's gone uh, in our household for the first two months. He went completely the other way. And my <laughs> right. stepson he became completely nocturnal. Really? And there were times when we get up in the morning and he was, he was just going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I'm remembering one of the uh, one of my favourite questions. We did this, when we started off all of this th- this stuff, we uh, drew up a list, or Adam's family did actually, a list of interesting questions that we could think of. And uh, the one that I think has provided the most amusement is, in your entire performing career, can you remember one incident, or it could be more than one if you really want, but can you think of an incident of uh, some... Disaster. What was the worst ever experience you've had during your performing career? I've had quite a few. I just don't know where to start. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that bodes well. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll tell you, the nosebleed. That was quite oh, disastrous. Although we, we, uh, when uh, Hutch and I, Paul Hutch and I, were uh, doing mm. Belshazzar's in the Ely Folk Club, mm-hmm. uh, for no particular reason, during um, one of the pieces, I think, Gathering Peas Cods, I was playing the oboe. Okay. And I just, my nose started bleeding. Whilst and for blowing. No, absolutely oh. no reason. I'm not susceptible to nosebleeds, and no. Paul hadn't, you know, hit Actually, me or anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> and the blood went all it went all over the oboe and all over my <laughs> started going all over my top. But I I carried on playing to the end because, as I say, you know, I like to say, um, I'm prepared to suffer for my art. <laughs> <laughs> and by the end of it, you know, there was blood all over my trousers, all over the oh, floor, no. up the walls. It was like a Tarantino <laughs> film. There was blood everywhere, and all the ceiling. And so I. <laughs> I went up to the uh, to the merch desk at the mm. back of the room. I just said to Paul, "Excuse me a minute. I'm going to have to get changed." He said, "No, no, you'll be all right." I was, I, was, I was covered in blood. I went up to the merch. To the, I'm going to get Hutch back now for his comment earlier. Good, good, I went good. up to the merch desk and I found whatever items of clothing were lying underneath it. And I there was a, a t-shirt, so I put it on, only to realise that it wasn't one of mine. It was one of Paul Hutchinson's. <laughs> So I camped out in that for the rest of the first <laughs> half. <laughs> and then in the interval, I went off to get changed properly. <laughs> this is true. Some bloke, one of the audience members, went up to Hutch and said, so that nosebleed that uh, Paul Sartre has just had, was that deliberate? <laughs> uh, at which point he went off with a nosebleed. <laughs> 
Uh, some of that's not true, and some of it is. Yes, <laughs> well, uh, I like it, all of it. <laughs> Fantastic, yes. I, I had um, sort of similar, although potentially more disastrous, although I did just about get away with it. Um, I was doing a gig somewhere in uh, the borders of Wales somewhere with um, Sean Hunter. We're doing a Captain of the Lost Waves gig. And for some reason, I won't go too graphic on this, I promise, but for some reason, uh, my um, stomach system decided that it was going to have fun with me. And I did, through that gig, I was having to walk off stage between numbers just to Ooh. get to somewhere quickly, have a moment and run back on stage. So oh I didn't yeah. actually have the full explosion, thankfully, unlike your nose. No. But, um, well, you know what? Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> well, I, 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 I could share a, a similar story. No, so no, mine, was, no, mine, my, mine, was, uh, mine was on um, uh, that Radio 3 thing, In Tune, yeah. with uh, oh, yeah. whatever he's called, Sean. Sean Rafferty. Sean Rafferty, that's right. And I had to keep escaping between... <laughs> It's not fun at all. I don't, anyway, I don't recommend it. Yes, quick, quick. No, no, keep going from, from you. It's a family think. show. <laughs> so, have you got another one then, Paul? Um, not involving um, anything explosive. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no I, I just, I, I do remember doing a bellowhead gig uh, when I got caught in really, really bad traffic. It was at Shrewsbury Flower Show in about 2015 or 2014. And I set off about seven hours before sound check for what's meant to be a three and a half hour journey. Yeah. And I still wasn't on time. And I got to the flower show and I they just I parked my car up and they bunged me onto one of those little sort of golf caddy type things. Yeah. And I could hear the band starting <laughs> as I was being driven through the ground. And I actually had to get changed in the golf buggy on the back <laughs> of the golf buggy in front of everybody being driven through <laughs> Shrewsbury Flower Show to, I think, you know, to the delight of a lot of elderly mm. flower yeah, aficionados. Have you got, have you got the yeah. YouTube link for that? <laughs> <laughs> and you see, to me, to me, that's a, that's a story of triumph. Yes. Not a, well, I, I not only a disaster. Missed, I only missed about half of the first number. So. You see? That's well, pretty that's good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good going. Yeah. yeah Triumph good. over adversity. That's Absolutely. what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> so we know you've got this uh, show in November. Um, what yeah. comes next? What's next on in your diary where people can, uh, can see Well, you? after that, on I think, and it should be on the 5th of December, um, we've got our Bellowhead Reunion. Oh, of well, course, that yes, that's coming up, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, which is really exciting and a bit scary because it's been a long time. It must uh, be, we yeah. did, we, we did a lockdown video to coincide with the 10th anniversary of Hedonism, which is, you know, our, yeah. our favourite album, really. Right. Uh, but then also to celebrate that, and to, uh, we thought we'd just get together and in, obviously, COVID-safe environments. Absolutely. And uh, with the 11 of us... Mm -hmm. And actually record the, you know our, our favourite tracks and put it out as a concert. So, so we're going to spend a couple of days together in at the end of November. Well, no, actually, it's probably next week. I need to do some practice. <laughs> it's next week. Oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and then and then it's going out at some point in December. Yeah. So that's okay. exciting. And then it, oh, during yeah. December, Paul Hutchins and I will do uh, one of our Christmas spectaculars yeah. as well. Good. Yeah. And then well, uh, don't know. Yeah. After that. Well, we will obviously share all these links uh, wherever oh, thank you. links Thanks. go on these things. I never really understand it, but they'll be somewhere. Well, it'll, it'll always be on my social media, on yeah, my Facebook course. page or whatever. Yeah. You know. Do we have what time for one last question, Murray? Oh, go for it, I think. So yes. we do it. Why not? So, just, this is, um, I think this one was Murray's, can't remember. Anyway, but if money was no object oh, whatsoever, yes. and basically reality was no object either, what would be your kind of dream gig? I think it would be doing the gig with all of my kids but actually other family members as well because almost everyone in my family does music of some sort mm -hmm. so it, um you know to make money it make ends meet only three or four of us can really go out and gig but it'd be great to have everyone joining in last summer i did um a thing called living by the sea at uh sidmouth and at whitby mm -hmm. okay. and my youngest son and my mum were standing on stage together with us uh, oh, and I'd, I'd like to do a sort of intergenerational thing and, you know, the, yeah, sort of nice. the, uh, the folk von Trapps. That would be what <laughs> I'd like to do. <laughs> As opposed yeah, I, to the um, uh, the Carpenters or yes. uh, any other singing family. Jacksons. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm intrigued to know what uh, what the costumes would be though for the uh, the folk oh, on traps. I, uh, I think, uh, my mind is uh, well, off now. <laughs> uh, well, I'm just, I'll I'll I'll, be, I'll dig out my dirndl. I'm sure I've got one somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has been uh, an absolute pleasure to sit and chat. Um, thank you Likewise. for uh, re- revealing all sorts of uh, <laughs> exciting <laughs> facts. <laughs> and, um, yeah, very best of luck with all the performances coming up. Um, we Thank we you, and will, the same we've... to you as well. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Good luck with the series. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, well. yeah, thanks very much, Paul. Thanks for coming on. Underneath the lantern by the barrack gate Darling, I remember the way you used to wait. It was there that you whispered tenderly that you loved me. You'd always be my lily of the lamp light, my only one. to part Darling I'd caress you and press you to my heart And then beneath that far off lantern light I'd hold you tight We'd kiss goodnight My lady of the land light My own lady Mr. Paul Sartin. Now, don't forget to join us next week, same time, where our special guest is the wonderful Lady Nade. Indeed. Mm. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just going to have to go to the bathroom. Um, sorry. sorry. There are no bathrooms in space. Really? Oh, great. Um, well, that's it from us, apparently, more or less. Anyway, um, yes, but you can join us Next week, as Murray said, potentially, I suppose, depending on whether he makes it back. Oh, he is making yeah, it back. No, That's sorry. great. I'm back. <laughs> um, sorry. And sorry. Um, in, the meantime, in the meantime, in the meantime, in the meantime, midnight cider on Sunday at twelve o'clock midnight, which is really Monday. Yes, we went through this last we did, week. Dear. Let's not go there length. again. Let's it's, not go there. No. Uh, so, thank you very much, and yes. goodbye. Um, and here's um, Jeremy. Sorry. I would like to congratulate myself on the removal of the Cummings man from Downing Street. Just like Mr. Sartin, I made him have a nose bead by sticking feathers up. And he blamed Boris. Yes, so he left. I was offered the job but said no because I want to be 
the dominant chicken prime minister, not an, an advisor, not an advisor, no, no, yes, and I thought Adam's and Marie's questions were silly. I would have asked him, Mr. Sartin, about chickens. Yes, 